and it's going to be the letter, and then after every letter, four foot high letters, um, there's going to be an image of some kind of worship. So the first one is the W, and then there's a um, close-up shot of somebody with a tambourine with a choir robe on. Nice. And the next one is um, a man praying, and the other one is a lady praise dancing, and a lady being baptized with the water falling off of her head. A hand is bringing her head up out of the water, and so on like that, like after every letter. And it's like the Gothic lettering up there. So, you know, it's funny how I get these contracts or these commissions by just being on this journey. I see know, what you mean. With, without calling and bugging people, you know. I, I just go to places, you know, like a daycare center. Every blank wall looks like a canvas to me. Oh, could you yeah. say that again? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Every saying, blank wall looks like a canvas to me. And and let me just, I want to say something there, because in doing this series, The Artist Recreates the World, I, I'm telling artists that I don't understand why this city is so bland. We think we have a lot of art. I'm wondering why New Jersey Transit doesn't have art all along the walls. Exactly. As you, you see what I'm saying? Not in just one little spot. Right. Yeah. Like, Your art transforms how I feel about where I'm at. Exactly. And, you know, you're going through the rat race every day, yes. you know, yes. and you yes. need something to yes. distract you from that so you could get back on your focal point. Or, or put something in your mind. Entertaining. Yes. What, that you don't, you know, have to drop a coin in the bucket for, you know. Yes. You could just look at it and it'll take you somewhere for a minute, you yes. know, relieve a little pressure. Right, right. So, so you can go back to Art is right. so very therapeutic. You know, I've, I've been teaching art, and I have this story about what they describe kids as today as ADHD. And Break it down. When we had tell ADHD them, them. as a child, my mother's um, pill bottle was probably the belt or give us something to do. That's right. You know, you want to dummy down people with medicine instead of finding out, you know... That's big pharma. What, what they need to... You know, they're just energetic. That's right. You know, so put them in an energetic situation, you know, before you drug them up. Can you just you know? repeat that again, That what you're saying, because it's so powerful. Yeah. You know, kids are very energetic today simply because of the change of food that we have. Yes, of You course. know? It's like... We didn't grow up on all that cereal and no. stuff. You know, cereal was like the emergency meal. Right. You know, like when there was nothing else, we had that cereal and stuff, you know. But we didn't ingest that every day. So the sugar and the chemicals and right. all that stuff, yeah. you know. So it's no wonder that you can come up with medicines for kids that are energetic, you know. That's a different story about profit. And, um, it is, but I, I love what you're saying so we can understand um, for the teachers and for the artists and even for mothers and fathers that if, if a kid is energetic, then put them in an energetic environment to cancel out. Yeah. Give them know, something that almost feeds that because it's an it's a, it's a artistic desire. It's, it's the creativity. It's something that's inside them that needs to be released. Yes. So you have to give them a channel, you know, to let mm. this energy mm. out in a positive way. You yes. know, you can direct them. Yes. Like that. I was teaching art in Ironbound, and um, this kid was labeled as ADHD. And after about a month, his mother came to me, and she said, you know, I am so grateful for you for being such a good teacher to these kids. My son, I worry about him, because if he's in a room somewhere and he's quiet, I have to go running to see what he's doing. He could be sticking a wire in the plug, in the socket or something, you know, doing something destructive. But now he's quiet in the room and I go looking on him and he's drawing. So I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. And I said, oh, thank you. And then that goes to, the, to show the power of the teacher that understands what the student needs, even outside yeah, of the curriculum. You have to encourage people all the time, you know. Even if it's in the workforce, 
You know, you just can't expect them to come in and punch their clock and be satisfied with the work that they're doing. Just because they're getting a paycheck. Yeah. That, that's hardly enough, you know. Everybody needs a encouragement, you know. You got to tell them, this is beautiful. You're a great artist and stuff, you know. That's what I tell all my students. I teach from the age 3 to 90. And everybody is a great artist, you know. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah. And getting my interviews for this series, um, I have learned to really appreciate people and thank them again, and thank them and tell them about their potential and, and tell them about that the sky is the limit. Why? Because I, I, I start to, to sense how much we're missing as artists and all the things that we really could be doing and touching other people and making not just our lives better, but when we make our lives better, we automatically make other people's lives